couple of months ago, a few boxers on the circuit started to talk about a special prize fighter. Not the one with Roy Jones, Sugar Ray Robinson, Tony Zell and Randy Turpin. No, they were talking about a brilliant idea and one that could possibly happen. They were talking about prize fighter, the journeyman. Well, it started as an idea, then it became a Facebook and an internet campaign. It's bubbling nicely. So I reached out a bit earlier and grabbed Johnny Greaves, one of the best journeymen on the circuit, and one of the boys behind the idea. I started by asking him who came up with the idea. Um, it was actually my brother, who's a, a trainer. Um, he put on something on the Box Rec forum, and from there it's just gone from strength to strength, and the, the, the feedback has been phenomenal so far. And, and how would it work, John? Like a normal prize fight, eight of you in one night leading to a final? Is that the same absolutely, sort of idea? Absolutely, absolutely, exactly that, Steve. There's more than enough German in Britain around the same sort of weight to make it to make it work. Yeah, what weight would you choose? Because there's heavyweight journeymen, there's sort of flyweight, come bantamweight journeymen, then there's fat ones that fight about six different weights. What weight are you thinking, Well, like John? I say, I'm, uh, again, most of Britain's best journeymen are around the ten-stone mark, so mm. we're looking including to... Um, including myself. Mm -hmm. um, and another list I've got here of, you know, Britain's best journeymen all around the same you weight. Read off a couple of the names from the list, John, and, and, um, their, and, and their sort of total figures, you know? Well, obviously, you've got myself, who's had 64 fights. So you've got Christian Late, who's had 100 plus, Daniel Fulp, 140, Jason Nesbitt, 110, Sid Razak, 60, Cole Allen, 118 fights, Robin Deakin, 28 <laughs> fights, Baz Carey, 59 fights, Ibra Riaz, who's had 20, but against top quality opposition. So let's assume we're going to, oh, all against top quality opposition, let's assume we're going to do it at 10 stone or thereabouts, 10 1 or, I don't know, 9 12 right. or something. Um, what would qualify you for journeyman? Because journeyman isn't just a guy that loses it. It's a um, guy that knows what he's doing like who, who a, happens to lose. Absolutely. I mean, to be fair, I mean, a, a top journeyman in my eyes would be someone who's regularly boxing top quality opposition. Mm. Um, someone that's had two or three fights a year with plenty of prep time in between, in my eyes, isn't really a journeyman. Nah, that's it might not just the same be thing. Not that great. He might just be a loser. Um, most of the work the top journeyman get if you're given more than two days' notice, you've done blooming well. Um, so, like I say, you need to be fit for 52 weeks a year, ready to go against the, you know, some of the country's best fighters. So, so get, let me get this right, John, just for the listeners who are maybe maybe unfamiliar with the term journeyman. So, it would be a group of guys like yourself who have had 60 odd bouts and 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 you know not won that many of them, 104 bouts and not won that many of them. But right. you've gone in at short notice, 24 hours, sometimes the same day. Yep. So 48 hours, you said, would be a bonus. Bonus. You've gone in against British champions, guys coming off a of well. I know you fought Gavin Reese in his oh, fight well, after mean, his world title. To be world fair, title. I took the job against Gavin Reese with 18 hours' notice. Um, in that time, I still had to get myself to Wales. Um, lose a couple of pounds and you know get there and get be ready to fight. So with journeyman the prize fighter though, you'd all have about six weeks notice training oh, to well, get in that, the ring. That's the thing. I mean, we'd all have decent prep time. <laughs> Any other work we get offered in the, the meantime side. will be sort of given a swerve. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, it's a completely open field. Everyone's got a chance of winning it, which is you know as rare as rock and roll droppings. Yeah, that's true. That you're going to get on a boxing <laughs> show. Now, some people have told me, John, because I've obviously been speaking to people just like you, ever reading the stuff on the forum. Uh, some people have said to me, yeah, but they wouldn't try. What do you say to that? Absolute nonsense. I mean, to be fair... To go out and, and, and nick the, the prize fighter title would be my version of a world title. And it's a lot of money for it's a lot of money four grand, a lot of money eight grand, a lot of money sixteen grand losing in the final, and a lot of money thirty two grand. Oh, well, I mean, the only chance of me getting thirty two grand in the bank is by winning the lottery, and that's not likely to happen. <laughs> so, I mean, like I said, it's not so much the money, Steve. Just yeah, I appreciate the, that. Just the chance to be known as Britain's best journeyman is more than enough for me um, to get in and give it my best. And John, do you think the public would warm to it? Absolutely. I mean, all um, Sky Sports would have to do a little bit of background story in yeah. all the fighters. And, and like I say, I think the average fan would be surprised um, mm. by the, the, the quality of opposition we face, um, you know, the sort of notice you get. We've yeah. all been in against, you know, future, dozens and dozens future past, fighters. present, yeah, yeah, yeah. future world champions. I mean, you know, you've only got to look for the top 20 ranked fighters in Britain, and one of us has boxed. Every single one of them. Yeah, basically. I, I, I agree with you. Every single, every single one of them. What about? Uh, there's one problem I got, and this happened when um, when Peter Buckley retired. Is it people keep you? They use the word loser. 
and it's look and it and it makes it look bad. And that's one of the problems. I think Sky would have that problem, and maybe even Matchroom would. Is that it would look like eight losers, which of course you are lo technically you are losers, but you're not losers. So how, how do you get around that, John? You got to educate people about journey. I'm, I mean, to be fair, I mean that most of the work we get are on small hall shows. When you're boxing against a local ticket seller that sold 200 tickets, to be fair, <laughs> you can't especially win, can you? the small hall promoters. <laughs> They're on a the lost mode show. They, they, they yeah, do anyway. So to lose, uh, uh, you know, their main ticket seller to, to an old bum like myself, <laughs> it, it's not good business for them. So obviously, you know, it's almost as if you, you're three rounds down before the first round. Yeah. And, and sometimes, like I say, unless you get a clean knockout win, which unfortunately I'm not a big banger, Hang about, um, it? it's not really going to yeah. happen. So, you know, and not only that, the lads are young, fit, yeah. fresh, 10 years, me, me junior, and it, it's, it's real hard to get a win. John, now you, you also get a reputation, not just as one of the best journeymen, but you're getting a reputation as one of the most entertaining you've got a little bit of an act going on you give to, to put it mildly you give your opponents plenty of stick you drove that geezer mad on that David Hay <laughs> on the car you, 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 I mean I know he beat you but you had a right life of him and he was what about 400 undefeated and 90, uh, yeah, 99 absolutely, or yeah, absolutely I mean it's for two reasons really I mean one you can't get him week in, week out and have a tear up with these Course boys. Not. Obviously, you're going to be fat. You can't be 100% match fit 52 weeks of the year. And plus, um, you wind them up before before you know it. They're going head hunting, um, and it's an, it easy. Easy, it's an easy easier. day's work. It makes to it be easier. On. Easier, yes. Now, absolutely. John, I met you earlier on in Starbucks. I should be putting in the claim for the coffee. But you didn't <laughs> have you didn't have anything to it because you're boxing this weekend. You're making I am, weight. Yes, Where sir. are you boxing um, this I'm weekend? I'm boxing at Doncaster on Saturday night on uh, Frank Maloney's show. Local fight, um, obviously, against a local lad that's. I big think ticket seller. I you know, big <laughs> ticket seller. Um, usual crack. Um, like I say, he's a decent lad. I know him personally. He's a good lad. Um, like I say, he easily wound up. Um, so so you're the crack is to get him, wind him up, get him head on, and then sort of um, see where we through. go from there. Absolutely. Well, listen, John, we'll, uh, we'll speak to you again as this prize fighter uh, uh, thing develops. And listen, thanks very much for your time. Johnny well, Green. Thanks there. a lot, Steve. Can I just say, on, before I go, um, thanks for all the feedback we've had on, on the box rec and the uh, Facebook site. Yeah. We've had over 2,000 people uh, Brilliant. put their names down. And, and it, you know, Sky... Match from can't really ignore it. It's going fantastic, and oh, you know I more or less guarantee a fantastic night's TV um, and, a, and, a, and a brilliant show. So Thank uh, thanks everyone. That was Johnny Greaves a bit earlier. Johnny, by the way, has won three of his 63 fights and has lost every time to a man with an un, with either a winning record or an unbeaten record. He's at the harsh end of a billion dollar business, however. He's essential. And as he said there, uh, when promoters hire him, they don't want their top ticket seller to lose to a bum like him. It's not good business. Now, to continue our look at prize fighters, the journeyman, it's the turn of Boxing Monthly Supreme Commander in Chief. It's Glenn Leach. Good evening, Glenn. Hello, mate. How are you? Didn't Johnny talk well there for a guy that's had 63 fights and lost 60 of them? How good was he there? I think that says something about the level of fight we're talking about, Steve. These it does. people can look after themselves. They lose fights, but they can look after themselves. And that's the, and that's where that's where that's going to be the tricky thing, I think. Here, Glenn, is is pitching this, packaging this as not just eight losers against each other. I think that's the problem. I think that is. Um, Basically, the problem that Barry Earn appears to have with it at the moment. Mm. I mean, we had a little word with him uh, for next, next week's Boxing Monthly. He comes out next week. Mm -hmm. And Barry really isn't keen. He seems to be of the opinion these days that prize fighter is now something of a vehicle to take someone onto the next level. Which I it think can mate, be, which it can be. It can be, and it has been, but it hasn't always been. Of course There's not. so many shows a year. Not everyone has been Audley Harrison and gone on to challenge for the world title. And yeah, I spoke to Eddie Hearn and, and, and he said he's not you know not a million miles from his father, Barry, but he said, Listen, Steve, you know, I'm not closing the door on it. If a deal can be done with Sky and if we can find the right fighters and if we think it's gonna sell, of course we're gonna do it. But he also pointed out that they've got four prize fighters left before June and they've got one already, light heavyweights. We're going to be talking to Joe Smythe in a minute uh, coming up next Saturday week. And they've got another two or three planned out. So it may be difficult to squeeze it in. But he didn't rule it out. I've got to stress, he didn't rule it out. Glenn, what do you think will be the criteria? How does a journeyman become eligible for prize fight to the journeyman? We've been tossing about this about a bit on, on box rec over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, really, I, I think when you hear the criteria, possibly they come out, it comes out a little bit low. Because, you know, people are saying, like, maybe they've got to have 30 fights and have lost half of them. Yep. Um, you know, they, they maybe they fought so many British champions. Or guys cetera. that have fought for titles, yeah. Yeah, or, um, you know, they, they have to have lasted the distance in so many fights. But if you look at the records of people like Johnny Christian Late, 
um, Daniel Fort, who's done a terrific yeah, job in Fort setting up that banging, Facebook yep. page. Outstanding. Um, it, you know, it, that, that, that kind of, it, those kind of criteria don't really apply because they, they, they pass it so easily. Yeah. And there are, there are so many fighters who do pass it so easily. So, so basically, it would be an elite. This is what I like about it. It could be only elite journeymen. Totally. Only the very best. Only the Johnny Greaveses, the Daniel Forbes of this world. Totally. And like, um, big, big Mark on Boxwick suggesting that Peter Buckley hands out the trophy at the end. <laughs> you, know, it's, 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 you know, we're talking about the top boys, Steve. Hey, listen, the Peter Buckley would because I, I bet he had 300 fights, Buckley, before he retired in 2008. And I've got to tell you, I bet, it, I bet 50 of them were on Barry Hearn's show. Yeah, more than likely. I mean, I mean that... Let's so hope Barry remembers that kind of thing. Listen, I, listen, I think he would. And, and I think I think this is going to rumble. And I've got to be honest with you, uh, uh, I'm not ruling it out, Glenn. I don't know about you. I, I fancy it could happen. Because I think, here's another thing, Glenn. I've been at more prize fighters, I think, than any other any other journalist, in national press journalist or national radio journalist. And, and I'm telling you, I can't get this in the paper. The only one that's ever got in the paper was Audley Harrison when he won at the XL. So, but I think, I think this could, would appeal to newspapers. I really do. If this is so... I mean, look, it's a, it's a terrific story. It's all, it's all very well. We get some, some lovely kid comes out of the amateurs. You know, he's won this, he's won that. Um, but he hasn't had a life. These no, lads not. have all had lives, they've had la hard lives. And that's, you know, you, that, that's where a good human interest story comes in. Yeah. The, the, the promo films they could make on <sighs> these guys, you know, imagine it. The reverse uh, knockout films. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, I mean, I mean, I mean you, they've all got real stories. Unbelievable to stories, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I sat with him today, John, uh, Johnny Greaves, for 10, 10 minutes, and he put me straight on a couple of people and told me some stories that are absolutely atrocious. They really are. And I tell you what, I'd, I, I might sit him down for longer in a couple of months. If this gets made, I might sit him down for longer. And someone's already posted on the East Side Boxing, and they've looked up his record. And uh, unlike most boxers, he's not got his next fight lined up. He's got his next three fights lined up. <laughs> Listen, Glenn, I've, I've got to let you go. When's the Boxing Monthly out next week? What's on the front cover? Can you tell us? Front cover, we've got David A, James DeGale and Carl Froch. Go we're, on, uh, we're covering our backside well, here, Steve. Yeah, well, let me just ask you this. My book was republished today. First time author with a second print. Have you got any mention of that in there? Well, you didn't mention it. Oh, yeah, OK. I, don't, I only mention it on air. All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Glenn, it's a pleasure talking to you. Glenn Leach, Boxing Monthly, which is the finest boxing monthly magazine anywhere in the world. There's a few others out there. Forget them. It's the only one I've worked for for the last 11 years. He's a great boss. He never argues. Just pays me on time. Listen to Steve Bunce on B